has the best 18 gauge cordless brad nailer. Guys, in the last couple of years, many of the manufacturers have introduced battery powered cordless nailers. And the trade off with these nailers has always been that they weigh a bit more than their pneumatic counterparts. While annoying at first, many users actually prefer the extra weight to carrying around an air compressor or plugging it in, dragging a hose around. You guys get it. So we took a look at four major 18 gauge brad nailers and we reviewed and tested them to bring you this head to head. Several test simulations we used that are considered typical tasks for a carpenter. And these simulations include softwood trim installation to evaluate hole quality, hardwood trim installation to evaluate power, penetration of the fasteners, depth of drive, as well as hole quality. We did a toenail application where we installed half inch beadboard uh, into framing by toenailing the tongue on the trim. And this test allowed us to evaluate penetration of the fasteners, line of sight, which is important, as well as depth of drive adjustments. And we also looked at line of sight and accuracy testing, where we installed fasteners into crosshair marks and straight lines. And that's to determine how well we hit the marks that we made, as well as determine line of sight and accuracy from the contact tips on the tool. In addition to these simulations, each of the crew members spent time shooting fasteners into various materials to evaluate um, each nailer independently. So we focused on scoring several different criteria. We looked at size and weight. We looked at ergonomics. We took a look at the features as well as performance of the tool. Of course, power, because everybody loves power. Price, and then we came up with best in class derived from all of the above. Let's talk about size and weight. The winner of that category was DeWalt and Milwaukee. So cordless brad nailers certainly benefit from the lack of air hose, but they do pay the price with the added weight of the batteries. The length, width, and height of each nailer, uh, we basically determined the cubic volume for that, and we assigned a rank based on that as well as the weight of the tool, and we compared that. In the accompanying graph, the upper band shows the weight of the nailer, while the lower band shows the size ranking of the nailers. The lightest brad nailers were the DeWalt at 5.2 pounds, followed closely by Milwaukee, which was 5.7. Makita and Metabo HPT were the heaviest brad nailers, approximately a pound heavier than the other two. Let's talk about ergonomics. The winner of ergonomics was Milwaukee. Ergonomics plays a major role in our evaluation on all the tools that we test. Not only does a tool need to perform well, but we feel that it's important that the tool is comfortable, which ultimately leads to more productivity and reduced risks of injury. So Milwaukee took the ergonomic category by storm. They came in 11 points better than the second placed DeWalt and 21 points better than Metabo HPT, which was in third place. The team felt that the changes that Milwaukee made to this new Gen 2 brand dealer were noticeable and impressive. So let's go through some of those ergonomic categories. We looked at balance. The team felt that Milwaukee was the best balanced nailer. The DeWalt is a little top heavy and we were testing it with a two amp hour battery. Now, if you, that can drastically be improved if you install a five amp hour battery, which is obviously heavier. And in that configuration, the DeWalt was evenly balanced with the Milwaukee, but of course it's slightly heavier. Uh, trigger switches, the Milwaukee has a hinged trigger switch, which basically mimics a pneumatic brad nailer, very similar. It is also spring loaded, so it has more resistance. It's a lot, uh, has the resistance, it's a very smooth action. DeWalt, on the other hand, is a slide switch, very similar to their drills, and there's a spring behind it. It's not as strong as in Milwaukee. The other brad nailers also had slide triggers. Functionality of the switches. So DeWalt switches are spread all over the tool, and they're mechanical switches. And what I mean by that is they provide a positive on or off. You just push it. The benefit to this is it's easy to operate, it's quick to activate, and it's really intuitive. Now, Milwaukee uses push button electronic switches, and we found them to be smooth, quick to use, and intuitive. The Milwaukee switches are all in one place, easily accessed and protected under and in between the handle. They also require that the user hold the buttons in for two seconds to ensure that you're not gonna accidentally bump or change the settings by accident. Uh, let's talk about maneuverability. Milwaukee and DeWalt had the easiest maneuverability, 
and we face that off of weight and uh, evenly distributed balance and size. Belt clips. Milwaukee had the easiest belt clip to hook on and it's hook. It has a slight outward curve which assists sliding over your belt. All of the nailers hung the same way, basically straight down once clipped on the belt. So they all basically sit the same way. Milwaukee and DeWalt use a wire style, style clip and DeWalt is a little bit thinner in thickness than, than Milwaukee. Makita is thin plate style or plate metal style and it's low profile and we find it kind of hard to hook on the belt. Now Metabo HPT has an inch and a half wide massive clip which resembles more of a rafter clip or something than a belt clip. Team felt it was a bit goofy for a trim carpenter nail tool and functionally speaking it just stuck out way too far. Um, let's talk about loading nails. DeWalt and Milwaukee both hold 110 nails and they are the only nailers that can drive up to two and an eighth inch brad nails. The DeWalt and Milwaukee were the easiest two nailers to load nail strips into by far. The team noticed that when loading a full strip of two inch brad nails into the Makita nailer, there's a teeny little tab at the upper magazine housing that actually prohibits you from putting that nail strip in by tilting it in. Like a lot of guys just tilt the nail strip in and drop it in. In order to get that strip in, you have to kind of lift it from the rear and kind of curve and roll it in. Look, this isn't a fatal error on Makita, but it does go against how we load our nailers. Just wanted to bring that up to you guys. Depth of drive. All of the nailers that we looked at have adjustable depth of drive. Milwaukee has a large, easily adjusted, positive clicking action knob. The range of adjustment is spread over 26 clicks. That's how much, how fine tuning you can get. DeWalt has a recessed knob and a visual arrow that kind of gives you some indication with seven clicks for full adjustment. Metabo HPT has 11 turns of a knob, uh, but if you unscrew it too much, the contact tip can come off. And, um, but setting depth of drive on it was easy and very responsive. Makita depth of drive knob has four turns for its full range of ro rotation. And if you turn it too much either way, the knob jams tight and it's hard to undo it. We found the Makita depth of drive extremely hard to navigate, but once dialed in to that, when you find the sweet spot, it produced the best looking nail holes out of all the nailers. Uh, performance. For performance, we looked at a lot of categories. The winner was Milwaukee again. This category reflects overall impression that the tool delivered while driving fasteners into uh, each of the test setups that we had along with individual team member evaluations. So performance was defined as the ability to consistently drive fasteners to the correct depth at a pace, a pace that the user would use to install trim, let's say on a job site, as compared to a pneumatic nailer. So we looked at toe nailing first. All of the nailers were able to toe nail well. The Milwaukee had a very narrow uh, tip applied to it. There's three tips. We used the narrow one. That was the most accurate to toe nail with, easiest to use and place angled nails. The Metabo HPT, once depressed and you were holding it in, was accurate with brad placement and real easy to use. Makita's narrow tip that it has naturally is easily viewed on straight nailing, but when held at an angle, the nail went out further than anticipated. Uh, let me see, runtime. While runtime is important with cutting and grinding and impact tools, it's less of a factor for brad nailers. Most of these nailers actually come with smaller batteries to keep the weight down. Three of the nailers came with two amp hour batteries and the Metabo HPT came with a three amp hour battery, but they also have a 1.5 amp hour battery. Um, line of sight, accuracy. accuracy. Accuracy is important. The Makita's nose is longer, narrower, and similar to a pinner style nose. And this nose depresses very slightly and um, it results in the tool moving very little or shifting, doesn't really shift much. So the Makita Brad Nailer was extremely accurate, as well as it has two visual indicators on the nose contact piece, and you know exactly where that nail is coming out. It was the most accurate nailer in this. The only trade-off on the Makita nose is that if you have a jam, and we didn't have any jams, it's not a toolless change. You have to, it requires an Allen wrench to remove the nose piece, hence it's the pinner style. Um, Milwaukee also has a minimal contact bracket movement on the contact tip and very, very little slop, side to side slop. The brad nailers in this test with the least amount of slop um, in their contact mechanism were the most accurate. DeWalt's contact bracket had a decent amount of slop, side to side play, 
and its tip was wider, which really helped with angled driving, but it hindered accuracy. The DeWalt actually shoots high, and it's not easily apparent when you first use this nailer, uh, whether it's gonna come up, up, down, left, right, you're really not sure where that brad's coming from. No doubt DeWalt users will, will get into the use of positioning and game it, and their accuracy will improve because you'll be used to the tool. Look, nine out of 10 times, you don't really need to be that accurate unless you're fastening outside miters or thin strips and you really need placement. Metabo HPT's ass end on the tool is big and the front end is chunky. And this hindered the line of sight, but the nailer has those arrows I talked to you about in the front tip and you know exactly where the brad's coming out. So we were easily able to achieve what we were looking for there. As far as the contact bracket tip, the Metabo HPT um, will not fire if you press down and you back off the surface just a little bit. To fire a brad nail, you need to fully back off the contact tip and reset the safety to, and then to press the trigger. A little bit of a pain in the neck um, when you're trying to you know, fine tune your brad placement and maybe you're moving the nailer around trying to find that sweet spot for nailing. One interesting thing that we noticed on the DeWalt brad nailer is that when the contact, uh, when it's in contact bump mode and you depress the contact tip at the front of the tool and keep it depressed down. You can slide that brad nailer along your material and just fire the trigger at will. Really nice, fast, allows you to kind of slide along work. Um, you also have the option to bump fire and you know punch the tool, but I don't use the brad nailer like that. Um, all of the brad nailers can fire in bump mode or sequential firing mode, and all of the nailers, <coughs> they fire reasonably fast. If uh, the team determined that Milwaukee and DeWalt were the fastest nailers out of the four. Let's talk about dry firing. This was interesting. All of the brad nailers except Metabo HPT have dry fire protection. Many of the tools have visual yellow spring loaded indicator buttons in the magazine and that tells you whether you're out of nails or it slides up and gets higher. The Makita, Makita fires every single brad in the magazine before locking out the tool. The DeWalt will fire up to 11 brad nails, and the Milwaukee will fire four brad nails before locking out. I mean, Clearly Makita got it right on this one because many times inserting a full strip of brad nails when you get a small little leftover nails, it causes everything to fall out and get all discombobulated in frustration with alignment. Um, all right, LED lighting. It was all over the place on these tools. The Metabo HPT and the Makita have really, really bright spotlights about this big and round, maybe four inches big and round. The Metabo HPT shines on the right side of the tool, but completely misses the contact point, which is, doesn't make sense. The Makita shines on the left side of the tool and misses the contact point, but really bright. The DeWalt has two LEDs, and they're on the, on the lower end of the tool by the battery, and they whitewash the entire area. And we consider that more general lighting, not as bright and not really task lighting. The Makita, I mean the Milwaukee, has a cone-shaped light pattern, which was very bright, but illuminated the, f the tip in such a way that it produced a shadow. So the team favored the DeWalt, followed by the Milwaukee in lighting. Uh, all right, let's talk about power. Everybody wants to know about power. The most powerful brad nailer was the Makita. The first question that comes up when you ask carpenters what they think is using, uh, when using finish nailers is always power. This is certainly a fair question considering how effective pneumatic, nail pneumatic nailers have been in our industry. So to evaluate power, we used several challenging wood species to represent typical higher end trim applications, you know, that many car finished carpenters face today. So, okay, let me see. Um, we looked at uh, three quarter inch thick oak trim. We looked at three quarter inch mahogany. Uh, we used mahogany one by four decking. Uh, and we also looked at three quarter inch Ipe decking, which is really hard, they call it ironwood, as well as three quarter inch maple. The Makita schooled the other nailers in this category, winning with a winning six points over the DeWalt and Milwaukee, which came in second and third at 11 and 13 points respectively. Um, the Milwaukee and DeWalt, they performed extremely well in this test by repeatedly installing brads at consistent depths. They had a better depth setting, they were more consistent, but the Makita, the Makita had the better holes. Um, the Milwaukee was able to sink and install fasteners at its highest depth setting, which was impressive, while the, Makita, uh, the DeWalt actually had to be adjusted to the middle of their depth setting 
to achieve the same result. Well, that tells me that Milwaukee's probably more powerful. The Makita has a slight ramp up time, but like I said, produced the nicest holes. Uh, overall, all of them were able to sink nails quickly into hardwoods. The Metabo HPT is the slowest nailer, and we figure that's due to the fact that you need to release that contact tip all the way out. It, it's too much travel time or travel space in order to fire that nailer. Um, okay, nail hole quality. Everybody wants to know, you know, does it tear the wood apart? To evaluate how nailers made holes, we examined the board, a board that we put hundreds of, of installed fasteners into. A representative group of holes for each nailer was ranked and picked. In this evaluation sample, from the boards that we picked, the fasteners were clearly and carefully placed for maximum accuracy. And then we used a USB 400 power microscope um, to examine these holes, ensuring that we had a fairly representative pattern of each individual nailer. Each of these nailers produced consistent, high quality fastener holes. But under closer examination with the microscope, there was clear and consistent differences between them. The Makita. The Makita produced the best looking holes by far. They were extremely well formed and they have very little tear out around the whole surrounding wood, the, the, the square that it produces from the, from the firing pin. Milwaukee came in a close second, close to the Makita, really close in quality. The Milwaukee samples had a hole that was closer in size to the head of the fastener, but exhibited some tear out in the periphery of the hole. The smaller size hole was the deciding factor in placing the, uh, the Milwaukee over the DeWalt. DeWalt came in third, again, high quality holes, but more consistent tear out on one side of the firing pin. And the DeWalt firing pin was larger than the fastener head, which created a larger hole than both Makita and Milwaukee. Um, all of these holes can easily be patched. So, I mean, it's, we're talking very small holes here. Let's talk about kit price. The winner of a kit price brand deal was the Metabo HPT. Pricing is a key part of purchasing mix. And we evaluated kit price at the time of this video to give you guys some sort of idea of, of what these things cost. We will note that Makita does not offer a kit, so we created a kit by combining bare tool battery charger, which obviously raises the price. Okay, the best overall 18 gauge cordless brad nailer goes to Milwaukee. Two brad nailers stood out and rose to the surface very quickly during our deliberations. The Milwaukee came in first. It consistently installed brad nails fast at the proper depth in hard and soft woods while leaving clean nail holes the size of the, of the brad nail. Nailing results were consistent and repeatable in all of the tests. There was no ramp up time for this nailer, meaning that the tool does not pause to recharge itself. It basically places a nail as fast as we were able to accurately aim, set, pull the trigger and go. It is fast. The tool's recoil is minimum and the word smooth was used to describe it throughout the testing. Milwaukee clearly took their time redesigning this nailer, this Gen 2 nailer, and it shows. Coming in second place was DeWalt. It's been on the market for almost two years now and is still a top brad nailer, top contender in the market. Milwaukee beat out DeWalt by improving on very small areas of this already proven nailer. The DeWalt mechanical switches and the straightforward design make it an easy to use tool. This brad nailer um, also consistently installed brad nails fast at the proper depth in both hard and soft woods and also left clean nail holes. Super nice nailer, really nice. So my final thoughts on this, on this review. The most impressive feature of all these brad nailers is their rate of fastening and how they achieve it with basically zero ramp up for the two top contenders. You can install accurate fasteners at a decent work rate with no disruption to your work speed. The job site advantage now belongs to battery powered nailers, especially when you factor in so many brands and so many tools on a battery platform. Just makes sense. Guys, we get lots of comments on how we arrive at our rankings. And as I've stated in previous reviews, there are hundreds of ways to compare tools. We're not a testing lab. The good news is we've openly shared all of our 
data from our tests and you can rank the tools however you want. You don't care about how we ranked a specific item? No problem. Simply remove it from our matrix above, re-rank them, and go to town. Hopefully, you find that this head-to-head -head is useful when comparing cordless 18-gauge Brad nailers. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment. We love hearing from you. I'm Rob Robillard, and we'll see you next time here at Toolbox Buzz. Thank <laughs> you.